This week's all about water tanks. Uh, this isn't a how-to, it's more like how do I? I'm kind of been thinking through what's the best solution for us. You know, do I get a concrete water tank? Do I get a plastic one? Where do we put it? All of that sort of stuff. And rather than just research for ages and ages, I thought, why not make a little video, put it out there, and if people can comment on it and give me their thoughts, then maybe that'll help me make a decision. So this is our current situation. It's chucking it down with rain, which is great because we need to get this tank full. So it's a 5,000 litre tank, which is just over a thousand, I think it's 1.3 gallons, yeah, 1.3 thousand gallons US. So it's a, you know, it's a reasonably large amount of water, but it's amazing how you get through it once you have a pump. So when we first moved up here, we were, we didn't have a pump. And so we just literally had a hose pipe and I kind of like stuck it into a little tap into the bottom of this thing. And because you've got no pressure, you're not taking lots and lots of water. So we lived on this tank for over a year like that without any problems. More recently, I've attached a pump. And then once you've got a pump, you just start using more water. If you want to have a shower, you know, you're blasting water. And then the garden's been really, really dry lately. And so there's always that temptation to think you don't want your plants to die. And so you start using a bit of water for that. But there just isn't enough. That tank is not big enough for our needs. This is my current solution. You can see behind me is just a load of old buckets collecting rain from this roof, which I'll put on the garden. Um, this roof uh, is actually quite large, so it spans the whole length of the bus and it's quite wide and I'm going to extend it a little further that way to give us a bigger kind of roof deck area. I want to collect the water off the roof and that will give us enough water to live uh, up here without any problems. Um, the difficulty is where does that tank go? Um, I really don't want to put it here. There's such a nice view. Uh, and it's also in the sun We're, you know, that's directly north. We're in the um, southern hemisphere. So this gets hit with sun all day long. I don't want the tank getting warm. In terms of where to put the tank, the first thing I thought is I'll call this one option one is to put it down there in the woods. The good thing about that is it's out of the way. It's out of the sun. So uh, and the, the big thing about it is it's just sort of aesthetically pleasing to not see the tank. Oh, the other good thing about it is that it'd be easy to take the water from the roof that would run right down here and straight into the tank. So that makes things easy. The difficult part of it is that the pump that needs to go down there would need to be quite powerful to pump it back up. And then you'd have to decide like, are you going to use that as your your main water source always pumping up into the house every time you turn the tap on or would you just feed in like large batches of water into the other tank and then use that as your main tank so that's one option um it's potentially it's potentially a difficult one i, I think that getting a digger to dig down there in order to get a flat base could be quite tricky you would have to be quite a large digger with a long enough arm to even get down there and create a base um yeah so it's not that's definitely probably the hardest option but maybe the most aesthetically pleasing i guess anyway that's option one so the second option is that i could leave it out of the ground and put it next to the container over there one of the good things about that is that it would be on the same level as this tank here and so the good thing about that is i don't think you would necessarily need a pump you could theoretically drill a hole at the bottom of both tanks connect them with a pipe which you dig in under the ground and then you wouldn't have to pump from one to the other they'd effectively operate like two tanks so that's a sort of neat solution in a way um, the difficult part of it being over there is getting the water in so as the water comes off the gutter I don't want the pipe just sort of running uh, you know too high right through the air it's just gonna look ridiculous so I want the pipe to be sort of dug in under the ground um, so there's a hassle factor to doing that. But um, anyway, that's still, that's not a bad option. So anyway, that one's option two. Oh, incidentally, this thing that I'm leaning on is our very first uh, water tank. So we used to use this when we were living in the van. So we were living in, this is like 20 litres and you just go and fill it up every couple of days. I've moved into the bathroom just to keep out of the rain. So the third option would be to bury the tank and that way I could put it wherever I want, um, roughly, which, which would be good because aesthetically it's nice just to have it out of the way. It means that I can put a pump probably directly over the top of it. Uh, I can move it as close to the old tank as I need to. The slight issue with that is obviously you can't bury plastic tanks. They're just not strong enough. So you go to concrete. 
And the issue with concrete is, is concrete tanks are really expensive. They're slightly more than double the price of a plastic tank. And then you've also got the additional costs of burying it. Um, I think, I don't know. I don't know what I think yet about the kind of health benefits. Like, there's something about me that feels that it's better to be drinking out of concrete than it is to be drinking out of plastic. Um, it's not like I've got any science to back this up. This is just a kind of vague thought. Um, so I don't know. I'd be curious to hear your opinion on it if you think that, that um, concrete is a sort of a safer drinking option. It's certainly going to be nicer. I think in the summer, when the sun is blasting onto a plastic tank, you're going to have warm water coming out of your tap, which isn't particularly nice, quite aside from the, you know whether there's any sort of downside to plastic leaching into the water. Um, and a concrete tank under the ground is going to be great to have cold water coming out. Disadvantage, I suppose, you've got the maintenance issue. You know, if you've got a plastic tank or even just a tank that's not dug into the ground and you have a problem, you'll be able to see that problem. You'll be able to fix that problem. I mean, quite a few times with that tank, I've been messing around with the connections. If you've got a, a concrete tank buried under the ground, I'm not sure how you're going to deal with any issues, whether you'd even notice that there are whether there's leaks, how do you fix them if there are any leaks? And you've also got the difficulty of cleaning it. You know, this is going to get leaf litter because uh, I'm collecting off the roof. So there is going to be some leaf litter which will end up in the tank, I would think. Um, right now I'm using like these litter screen guards on both of these roofs. And that's probably, I'm imagining it's getting out most of the leaf litter, but there's always going to be some that comes through. And over the years, that's going to collect as a kind of sludge at the bottom of the tank. Um, so I think whatever situation you have, you're, you are going to have a situation where you need to clean that tank, I would think, every, every few years or something like that. Um, but I suppose that's the same with all tanks. It's just that I don't know whether it becomes a bit trickier once the tank is like buried um, deep into the ground. But anyway, that is the water quandary. You know, interestingly enough, when I was doing a little bit of research, just trying to find out how big a tank I needed, um, the tank I'm going to get is five times bigger than this one. I mean, this looks quite small, mainly because it's buried in the ground, but it's probably like, if you went down to the bottom, it's probably, say, eight foot tall. So it's, so it's a reasonable size. And the tank that most people use here uh, that I see around, the biggest one that they can easily sort of transport on roads and stuff, is a 25,000 litre tank, which is, I mean, I could easily park my van inside that tank to give you a size of the scale of it. You know, it's three metres wide, three metres tall. This is a big tank. And when I thought about it, I thought, well, how much on average are people flushing down the toilet, say, of, if, you know, what percentage of that large tank would they use, say, in a year? And it turned out that, I mean, it's difficult to say because it depends on the size of people's systems, and that varies uh, a little bit. The older the system, the, the bigger. But in a worst case scenario with a big system, you would flush two of those tanks per year just down the toilet. It's like an absolutely staggering amount of water that goes down the toilet. I mean, I don't much care. I, I'm using, going to use a compost toilet, so it's not, it's not going to affect my water usage. It was just a kind of weird thing. And I thought, God, it's, it, it, it's, it's just amazing to me that kind of like what is actually quite a precious resource that, that is just unfortunately just being sort of flushed away. And interestingly, I'm not sure that it's that effective. Like I surf quite a lot and, you know, over the past few years, over the past two years on, I think three occasions now, I've seen like raw sewage in the ocean. And I live in New Zealand, which you would imagine globally is probably pretty good with that sort of thing. You would guess, I don't know. Um, so you think, well, if New Zealand are pumping raw sewage out into the ocean occasionally, I'm sure pretty much everywhere is, I guess, uh, at some level. Uh, so yeah, it just seems like this kind of uh, a solution that's not really working, you know, just flushing stuff, you know, a real precious resource and then using it just to transport human waste out into the ocean. I don't know. Anyway, this is there's not this isn't becoming some big crazy rant about it all. This is just sort of facts that I've uh, sort of stumbled across whilst researching water tanks. Anyway, thank you uh, so much for listening. I'm sure it's not been particularly fascinating this week, but um, it's it's been a hard one. I've got quite a lot to do and uh, don't have a lot of time for filming this week. But uh, if you do have any comments that you think might help me out with where I should put those the water tank in terms of those three locations, or if there's something I'm not thinking of, or if the, you feel that for some reason plastic is 
better than um, concrete or whatever, I'd be really keen to hear it. Thanks again, and hopefully I will see you next week.